thematic group. Mm, I would like to thank you all for joining us in this discussion. I'm uh, Sedi, I'm a health system researcher from uh, Iran University of Medical Science. And I was the coordinator for the thematic area three on health service delivery in this research agenda setting activity. First, I would like to thank you all my colleagues in this team, Prabha, Rosemary, and Mamutena. And uh, I would like to present the initial results and top 10 questions in this thematic area. In the health service delivery uh, thematic group, actually we investigated uh, the area uh, and uh, how the gender uh, could influence the inputs, uh, quality and utilization of health services, both for uh, COVID and non-COVID services through identifying priority research questions. Uh, next, next slide, please. Thank you. And in the first phase, there were uh, 33 participants from all around the world, from different organizations, UN organizations, NGOs, and academic institutions. And uh, we were asking participants to propose their uh, priority research questions um, in the area of gender, health, and COVID pandemic. There were three evolving drafts, uh, which were uploaded regularly on the website to inform the participants and to engage them more, and also to address the neglected areas. Uh, for instance, in the first draft report, uh, we haven't seen any question about financing. So we uploaded the drafts and we asked participants to address this area or ask the expert on health financing to participate on the survey. Finally, we uh, choose uh, 54 research questions. Actually, we refined uh, 54 research questions in uh, eight uh, different terms. The access and quality of care uh, with um, three different categories, the general questions, the questions for key services like the access and quality of maternal care, the COVID um, related care, or uh, for example, the care related to children. The access and quality of care uh, were also categorized for key populations like uh, women, children, or older persons. The service delivery mechanisms, the human resource, medical supplies, uh, health information, and health financing were addressed in this survey as well. In the next phase, we asked uh, uh, participants to, we actually designed a survey to prioritize these uh, 54 questions for us. Uh, and in this phase, hopefully uh, 34 uh, and other participants have responded uh, to the uh, survey and we are going to present the uh, top 10 questions, which were ranked by these participants. Uh, next, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, in the survey, we uh, had three criteria which um, participant uh, were asked to uh, rank. The first one was about health uh, benefits. No, uh, actually we asked uh, participants how addressing the specific research question is going to uh, improve the health benefits. Mm, uh, how, um, and uh, there was a Likert uh, scale actually from uh, low to uh, high. And uh, they were asked to respond and rank the questions. The next criteria uh, was about gender equality. 
actually how uh, addressing a, a specific research question uh, could influence the gender equality and um, the uh, Likert server, um, Likert escape, sorry, was um, from uh, um, not likely to highly likely. And we also asked uh, the participants about the urgency of the research question. So uh, we asked them, uh, is the research questions is going to be answered in uh, the short term, medium term, or in the long term? And you can see both of these scores here. Uh, I should explain that we uh, calculated an impact score uh, that you can see here. The impact score is a combined score from the mean value of the health benefit and gender equality, just to uh, simplify this presentation and the analysis. So we have the impact score here, and the uh, questions are actually ranked based on the mean value of the impact score. And we have also uh, urgency score that we could have a look at it when uh, considering the top 10 questions. So uh, let's have a look uh, at the research questions themselves. Uh, the first one, as you see, is uh, to what extent and how has utilization of quality, sexual or reproductive and maternal health and um, violence against women services uh, changed because of the COVID, how COVID impacted this um, uh, utilization of these services. And we have uh, how did uh, health service delivery measure respond to the needs of pregnant women who tested positive for COVID? As um, I mentioned, it's um, under the term uh, uh, quality and access to services for a key population. The pregnant women were identified as a key population, for example. And the third one, how does access and quality of uh, services for COVID differ by gender and its intersection with other social categories like race, disability, or so on? Or what strategies were used to improve gender and other inequalities in access and quality of care for COVID services like testing, facility-based care, uh, quarantine care, or so on, and how effective they uh, were they, these strategies, actually. Please, thank you. And uh, how has the priorities, uh, priori um, prioritization of the COVID services uh, affected access to services for no non-COVID conditions? It uh, was a great challenge all around the world when um, during the surge of COVID cases, all the um, elective surgeries, for example, were canceled or uh, some of the unnecessary services were postponed. Uh, what is the impact of a school closure on access to health service for adolescents is um, another example of key uh, populations, adolescents. Um, and uh, what are the different service reorganization model? This question actually concerns uh, uh, service delivery models. No. I think we have lost you a little bit, Sadie. Can you hear us? I think we may have lost her. Um, Mamatina, can you, are you able yes. to? Yes. Um, you. Okay, I'll continue until Sadie comes back. So she was touching on question that was ranked number seven, which was on service reorganization during the pandemic, um, how, um, what kind of models were used to reorganize services, especially to ensure the continuity of uh, maternal health, sexual uh, and reproductive health 
services and violence against women and girls um, services and how effective were those uh, models. The next question was around um, how, to what extent and how has utilization of uh, quality mental health services changed uh, by gender and its intersection with other social categories because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't know if Sidi is back, but feel free to interrupt if you are. Um, then the last two questions, uh, and here we are presenting just the top 10. Remember we had 54 questions that have been ranked. And on number nine uh, was the question on how access and quality of care for non-COVID-19 conditions changed during the pandemic, especially by gender and its interaction with other social categories. Um, again, an access and quality of care issue. And lastly, what measures were enacted to maintain um, and safeguard against interruptions in essential services um, and services by gender as well and services for other groups. And I think that's it with the top 10 thematic questions. Is there anything you wanted to add, Sidi, if you are back? I don't think she's back. I haven't been, I haven't um, managed to, I haven't seen her to, um, uh, invite her back into the room. Um, can I ask everyone, please, um, that uh, if there are particular questions, can you begin to um, start putting them through the chat function? I think it would be useful if, uh, Mamatena, you um, provide some comments um, as well as part of the process. We had, as, as Asha had mentioned, we had hoped to uh, um, have Jeanette Vega with us, who had prepared, um, a, was a discussant to, to this particular session. Um, but we've, we've just been um, told that she's um, suddenly very unwell. Um, so Mama Tena, can you um, provide some comments and then I'll open it up for uh, discussion. I think Seti is just coming in now, um, but, but please go ahead. You're muted, you're muted, Mama Tena. Right, thank you. I think I'll keep it to two minutes because I'd really love to hear um, everybody else's uh, reflection on those uh, emerging priority questions. Uh, but for me, it strikes me as someone who's been involved in the process from the beginning um, and having written the thematic report that came from the broader consultation process and not the survey, and that gave rise to the questions that were asked in the survey, um, the 54 questions that we had, um, how broad, how much broader those questions are. It's not just access and quality uh, of health services for key services and key populations, but uh, as well as service models. But there's also a lot of questions on human resources for health, where we, we ask questions around how health workers have been challenged by this pandemic, and how gender issues compound that, the issues of safety and security of frontliners and access to training opportunities, for instance, um, recruitment reforms, especially in managing search capacity with the different waves of the pandemic. Um, and there were also questions, as Sadie has shown with the different themes around medical supplies, access to COVID-19 commodities by how to reach vulnerable populations, um, effective strategies for deployment delivery of um, vaccines, for instance, and what is being done in health information systems to capture sex desegregated data. Are we learning from the data? What are we learning from the data in terms of the differences of gender um, in care access, affordability, health outcomes, and so on? And the health financing questions that um, really formed a, a, a big part of, of this um, uh, priority questions or the, the 54 questions that we are rating in the survey, questions around um, allocations and reallocations of funds in ways that impact you know, genders differently and uh, changes in purchasing mechanisms, as well as um, protective measures for, for instance, 
uh, women headed households. So there's a broader set of questions um, to answer and I hope that people will continue to participate uh, in the survey and it will be interesting to see how it keeps evolving as more people um, participate. But I think I'm going to leave it there for now and see what uh, uh, everybody thinks. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mama Tena. Um, welcome back, Sedi. We did Hi. manage to, um, I guess, Sorry. I, I see. Sorry, I lost the electricity actually, it was gone. And so my Wi-Fi connection, <laughs> I'm now with my mobile phone. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I think Mama Tena was able to pick up um, the the presentation um, as uh, exactly where you left off. Um, yeah, so, thank you, Mama Tena. Yeah. Um, so, uh, really, what we would, in terms of of just opening this up for discussion now, I think um, what has been striking about this whole process, not just this this um, session within service delivery, but what's been really striking about this process is. Um, the number of times I've been um, engaged in, in the Kazillion webinars that are available and so on, and, and the number of times I have heard um, that within, the, within uh, COVID as a pandemic and priorities, it's just about providing services and there are no gender issues. And as long as, as you're providing the best quality care, that there really isn't anything to um, worry about. And then you open up this kind of process and you really get a good sense of the sorts of things that, that do worry um, people or that, that actually do have an impact on their lives. And, and, and it has been an incredible learning process for all of us and one that we really hope can be injected um, into the, the um, development of evidence and so on within this area. Um, I'd really like to hear from you now, um, and I don't want to, uh, to be too directive about the questions, but really it's, it's the, um, it, uh, around this broad thematic area of, of um, service delivery. Are there things that you think need to further be included? Can we get you to engage more in the process and extend the, the, the questions or extend the, the participation much further? So the floor is open, please. I have so far. I have just seen one question in the chat function, which is about um, the acknowledgement of people who contribute. Absolutely, this is a this has been very much an open process, and one that that is is um, uh, where people are allowed to engage as much or as little as they have time um, to engage with. Uh, the The website is open. I will ask. Um, uh, at the end of the, the discussion, when we all come back together again for all the, the links to be shared again. Any questions? Hands, the, hand, the hand up function is through reactions um, or questions through the chat function. The floor is open. and a total silence. Yes, Mama Tena. Yes, uh, Pascal, I think as we wait uh, for questions also just to um, reflect that as we move along in this agenda setting process, we are also starting to think about uh, the kinds of actors and strategies that are needed to ensure uh, that this priority and other research questions are answered and this research agenda is taken up. So. These are some of the um, reflections that we can have together, as well as a reflection on whether the agenda, um, as you said, is reflective of all of the um, uh, populations, for instance, and contexts that it needs to, to be reflective of. So just throwing that in there as well. Great, thank you very much. Um, Shifa, oh, sorry, uh, Fatima. Hi, um, I'm sorry, I have one small question or more of like an observation. Um, oh, no, sorry, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Shifa Fatima and I'm from Pakistan and I work at the Planning Commission of Pakistan and I've been working on the COVID-19 response of, of Pakistan. So I've been working on health sector upgradation <coughs> and uh, vaccines. 
And I have a migration, I have a uh, background in demography, uh, gender, <clears throat> and migration. Um, something which I have observed uh, is that the accessibility not only of service delivery, like contraceptives and sexually reproductive health, but also of vaccines. Um, because I was analyzing the <clears throat> response of South Asian countries, Nepal, uh, Pakistan, India. So most of the <clears throat> response is like centralized where women are expected to come to the vaccine centers. However, <clears throat> we're not taking into account on how, you know, women's mobility is a very big issue to get to the vaccine center. So vaccines are not available at the basic district level, but they're available at like, you know, at like a relatively higher level, maybe in like big cities. <laughs> or even like, for example, if it's a village, they have to like travel to the city to get the vaccine. So, so I was very interested, interested in, you know, use analyzing this as a health service uh, delivery point of view. Um, sorry, was that a question or a contribution? I missed, I missed. Just, just a contribution. Okay. Um, that's great. Uh, um, please note, everyone, that we're recording as well. So this, um, it, the contributions will will all be included as part of the process. Um, thank you very much, Shifa. Thanks. Any further interventions? Um, Pascal, sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I had a question myself when uh, I was uh, reading the top 10 questions about, uh, you know, I was wondering that um, all of the top 10 questions were somehow related to access and quality of care and not about uh, medical supplies or health financing. And I really would like to discuss here and, um, you know, uh, why uh, that happened. It is maybe because of the expertise of the participants or because of the structure of survey or maybe uh, the nature of questions, you know, which were asked uh, in the survey. Uh, you know, we ask people how the question is going, uh, how the research question is going to affect the health benefit. So, um, you know, or the gender uh, equality. So um, access and quality of services are more uh, likely to have a direct impact, you know, um, you know, make more sense to have direct impact on health benefit or gender equality. While, um, you know, in the first place, people think about access and quality of services. Uh, and then about the uh, mechanisms of financing or health service delivery models. You know, I'm just curious about uh, what um, uh, we see these uh, top 10 questions from uh, the access and quality term actually. Um, I might actually open that up. I, I think I think that's an important point, but I think it, there is also an opportunity to add that um, into the into the the pool of, of questions to uh, keep continuing to to grow the issues. Can I um, actually call on pe people working in this area? I see Angina's on the call. Angina, any comments on that? Um, could you? Hi, sorry, I was attending to an <laughs> urgent email. Could you? Uh, just summarize the question for me. Sorry to be inattentive in the uh, moment. Sedi, do you want to raise it again? Uh, just, just very briefly. Yes. Um, uh, um, you know uh, why that's actually uh, the top 10 questions in this uh, thematic area are all about the access and quality of care. Why we didn't uh, see questions about medical supplies, human resource or so on. Didn't see questions about other uh, issues around health. Systems. Other term, other terms. Like Sorry, I missed it again. Sorry, it, it is. It's. It's. Uh, why? Why do we not see other um, priorities such as human resources for health um, uh, okay. as part of it as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think these are the questions that kind of uh, scored the highest. There were uh, several dozen, several scores, 
not several hundreds of questions received. And as part of the process, they were, um, um, they were rationalized and clubbed together in, into, sim, you know, um, if there were four or five questions on, in one, on one topic, they were rationalized. And then I think this is what surfaced as the, um, as the top priorities. Uh, certainly, uh, for example, WHO's own guidance on gender and COVID-19 uh, brings up, uh, there are six recommendations in that guidance. Uh, I work with WHO, uh, two of which are related to the continuity of uh, essential services uh, from a gender or uh, women's health perspective. But the others are, uh, for example, there's one exactly on healthcare workforce and uh, what kinds of issues are important. I think that um, there is guidance in general on um, uh, how to maintain the continuity of services, but many, um, many gender related aspects in that specific uh, field uh, are, there isn't guidance. So I think, and there isn't a lot of knowledge. Uh, so uh, I think that is really uh, where the um, weight of the uh, rankings has fallen. And I think we're seeing uh, the highest scoring questions in this moment. That said, I actually don't recall seeing a lot of questions in the long list on uh, issues of health workforce and so on. Although there are many gender related issues um, around the health workforce during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. I also think that it, it's it, it's a reflection of who is responding to it. So we have we have people who are users of the services as opposed to um, those who are are a part of the health system. Um, and as Angina says, it's 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 not it's I don't think it's necessarily a, a reflection of what is what is more or less important, or that it's not the health workforce question is not important. But but it is a uh, what what we're what we're producing is a summary of what the concerns are that people have raised that need to be a part of the discussion. Um, can I um, call on others as well, um, perhaps to contribute? Um, I don't see hands up. Anna Coates, um, any? Any specific comments about the nature of these priorities um, and the, the impact you think they could have? No, I think they are possibly as as you might expect, especially um, some of the, the issues around access and quality and with respect to reproductive um, and sexual health services. I think, again, I think similarly as the previous comments have made, I think one of the issues might have been in terms of the delivery of services and the impact upon women with respect to women as health workers and how the, the, or the, the strain on health systems and, and their role um, and the how that is, that makes a dual impact on women, both as uh, providers as, and as uh, uh, clients or patients. So I think that therefore I might have expected something around that. But um, I think otherwise, I, I think listening to all the debates around COVID, I think that those aspects that have come out are definitely reflective of what you hear in those broader discussions in terms of the, the, the priorities. Um, I think the rights aspect of it and how the services are delivered 